In the last video, I completed the first panel with the fabric wrapped around the frame and the insulation inside. I did the same thing for the other panels off camera and here I'm just finishing the final panel. Somehow I managed to not record audio for a lot of the footage in this video, so I'm just going to overdub to explain what's happening. I used a box cutter to trim back the excess edging. So here I'm cutting out the section where the cables will go for the microphone and the headphones and USB port. I used this 25mm drill bit to cut out the holes for the jacks. It's a good idea to drill from both sides rather than drilling all the way from one side. This way you avoid getting some big chips coming out of the material. At this point, all of the panels are completely wrapped in fabric and have insulation inside. So I've got the two walls, the door and the back piece, as well as the top and the base. So everything's ready to be assembled. There's just some final things that need to happen before that. I need to do some wiring for the ceiling. You can see there's a microphone jack. There will be a headphone jack in the middle and then this USB-A. And then on the outside, there's a microphone output and USB-B and there will also be a headphone jack. So I need to connect the two USBs to each other, the two microphones to each other so that it passes through to the outside and then I can connect to my interface and to my computer. This is just a cheap microphone stand that's meant to go on a desk, but it has a thread so I can unscrew the post and reattach it. Rather than buying cable and connectors, I just bought some short microphone cables, which I cut in half. Um, this way they already have the connectors attached. So here I'm just stripping the ends of the wires and I'll solder the ends to the inside of the jack. The reason why I have connectors on these cables is so that if I want to pull this top panel out of the ceiling, I can pull it out and then disconnect the connectors and bring it to my table if I need to fix something. I used the small panel to hold the cables while I soldered them. So I've attached the wires for the microphone jack and the headphone jack, and I actually swapped them over to go in the top panel. So basically the small panel is a module which can disconnect from the top. Then since the USB jacks have a jack on the other side of them, I just need a simple USB cable to connect between them and no soldering is needed. Then I just have some cheap LED strips I bought from Ikea, which are stuck on with adhesive and are powered through the USB port. The sharp edges of the heavy panels were cutting my hands a lot, so I decided it was time to give them a sand. Okay, this is it. I'm finally gonna put it all together. Basically, the last time I assembled it, I just put timber screws straight into this wood. But now, because I wanna make it possible for it to be disassembled, I'm putting in these threaded inserts. This means that I need to put the panels in place, drill some holes to put these inserts in, then take the panel off, screw the inserts in, and then I can put the panel back on and put the bolt in there. So, it's a bit of work to do. I think this time around, the assembly is gonna be a bit slower. But once it's done, hopefully it's the last time I need to assemble it. Unless I need to take the top back off for some more wiring, but we'll see. It's a bit harder this time because the frames are covered up. I can't put my hands in here to hold it up by the frame, so I kind of have to just grip it by the edge. It would be nice if I had some clamps to hold everything together, but 
I might have to put some temporary screws in. I don't recommend wearing sandals when you're doing this, but I'm doing it anyway. It looks really nice on the inside. <laughs> I can't wait to show you. I'm just moving the screws that are holding the thing together around to different places while I'm drilling all the holes. Uh, even after I drill the hole out, I can still put the screw in there. So I can drill that hole, then put a screw in there to hold it in place so I can take the other one out and drill that hole. So I need to put the inserts in now. So there's gonna be four inserts in this piece and four in that piece, and then the rest are all in the bottom. So I've screwed that end on completely and unscrewed this end. So I'm gonna take that off, put the inserts in the ends of this and this, then screw that back on to hold them up. Take the top off, screw the inserts in the end of this and this, and then I'll take everything off and I'll put all the inserts in the bottom, and then I can put it all back together. spots where I've had to drill through the fabric. That fabric is now going to be at risk of tearing, so I'm going to put some staples around the holes so that the fabric stays there. So when I screw in the insert, the insert won't sort of twist the fabric or something. I'm going to use the countersink bit just to clean up the hole a little bit before I put the insert in. first inserts in. I'm pretty happy with how it turns out. Um, I don't think the fabric is going to get damaged, so I'm going to go around and do the rest of them. So I've finished putting all of the inserts in all of the panels and I was worried that if I drilled these outside holes the exact same size as the bolts that it would be really hard to align the bolts into the inserts because they need to align perfectly so that they can start to thread in so that you can actually screw it in without any resistance. So I thought I might need to drill the holes a little bit bigger, but I found if you just push it in and wiggle it a little bit with the tool that I could get it to align and you can feel it snap into alignment. So I'm not going to enlarge the holes for now. I'm going to leave it as is so that the whole thing aligns better when I assemble it. Some of the bolts needed a little bit of convincing, but the whole thing seemed to go together without any major problems. So the booth is all put together now and it feels pretty sturdy. I'm quite happy with how it turned out and now I need to attach the door. And now I can see how heavy the booth is and how heavy the door is. So I need to be careful that I attach it in a way that the door won't get damaged and the wall won't get damaged. The plan is basically to place the door on top and get it into position and try to align the hinges and then I can attach the hinges properly and then take the door off so that I can stand the booth up and then I'll rehang the door once it's standing. Rather than using timber screws, I'm putting bolts through the hinges with a washer on the back. This just means that it's less likely to rip the screw out of the timber. So I'm hoping that this will be strong enough with just the two hinges. I might need to go to three or four, but with four bolts on each hinge, they should be pretty strong. So we'll see how it goes. 
there is this one bolt which ends up being very close to the edge of the timber and I really can't fit a washer so I just have to leave it with a nut and hope that the other three are enough. The sheer weight of the booth actually compressed all of the felt pads that I put on last time so I bought a whole bunch more and I'm just going to spam the bottom <laughs> with felt pads just so that it can spread the weight out a bit more evenly. Beautiful. It looks a bit silly, but it's gonna help out a lot and it'll make it a lot easier to slide the booth when it's standing. So now I've got to lift it. And it's much harder this time. Let's try that again. Now I finally get to experience what it's going to be like inside. It's a very weird sensation standing in there actually. It's like a weird pressure thing in your ears. So now I just need to put the door on. It works really well, except it won't close all the way. I realized that it's because the screws in the hinge are slightly too long and they're interfering with each other. So I'll need to swap those. And now I'm just putting some magnetic latches on the other side so that when you close the door, it holds itself closed. I found a trick for aligning the magnet on the inside with the one on the outside. I just put a screw through the hole in the magnet and then pressed the door closed on it and let the screw put a small dent into the door and then I could drill that hole. So the magnets are done, but now I want to put a handle in here and the handle on the outside is easy because it just needs to go through the thin timber, but the internal handle will need to go through the frame. It's a bit more difficult. Uh, I would never use this rug in my bathroom, but it's perfect for inside the booth because it's quite thick and it's going to absorb the sound just like the foam in the walls do. I just need to cut it a little bit shorter so it fits better. So right now I'm filming myself on the camera and on my phone so that I can do a test. I'm gonna walk into the booth and I also have a microphone on the camera and you can hear the audio from the mic inside the booth. So I'm gonna walk in there, keep this video going so you know that it's not edited and um, we'll see what the difference is. So I'm gonna go in now and I'm going inside the booth and closing the door. Okay, so now I'm just standing in front of the microphone. So I'm gonna go in now and I'm going inside the booth and closing the door. Okay, so now I'm just standing in front of the microphone. So I'm gonna go in now and I'm going inside the booth and closing the door. Okay, so now I'm just standing in front of the microphone, but yeah, I'm doing a test, so I'm talking quite loud now, you can probably tell, <laughs> um, but I just want to do a comparison. But yeah, I'm doing a test, so I'm talking quite loud now, you can probably tell, um, but I just want to do a comparison. But yeah, I'm doing a test, so I'm talking quite loud now, you can probably tell, <laughs> um, but I just want to do a comparison, so we can head back out into where the camera is is out here with the microphone on top. So we can head back out into where the camera is out here with the microphone on top. So we can head back out into where the camera is out here with the microphone on top. And yeah, should be a good comparison, I guess. So I'm super happy with the results here. I mean, it's not completely silent outside the booth, but it's much much quieter so that's great it's proved that this thing can work so i'm excited to finish it in the next video see you there